congratulations with your new short film. Uh, that's going to be premiering on June 8th. It is. We are very excited. Thank you so much. You're welcome. So tell me about the inspiration of creating this, this film. Yeah. Well, we essentially love dream like romance movies like Call Me By Your Name and Before Sunrise are the two we always say, but we just love this. I think our work is generally pretty dreamy and a little bit surreal, taking real spaces and making them kind of our fantasy version in our head. So we kind of did that. We went, we went to Spain and um, were extremely inspired by the landscape and culture. We were coming off of like a really hard year of work and um, sounds a little cheesy, but we felt really healed by a lot of the things that happened to us in Spain. And we ended up writing this story about a girl not so dissimilar from our young selves who just experiences a new place and it changes her as a person. And we just started writing something on a farm at midnight in Catalonia. And, that and was that. we wrote the like feature first. Like we, we, it was originally a full length film. And then we're like, we should film a piece of this to try and help make the bigger piece. So um, yeah, that was kind of the inspiration directly behind then the short film, but um, yeah. Oh, that was going to be my other question. Why Spain? Because you don't sound Spanish at all. Um, no, we are definitely not. We come at it more from the perspective of Sophie. Yeah, our uh, protagonist is American in Spain, and that was obviously taken from our experience being there. But yeah, it was why Spain? Because we were in Spain and had such an amazing time. We also met um, a person while we were out there named Rita Roca, who was we met at a restaurant on the coast and she was actually our waitress and she was very, she was like 16 at the time. And she really struck us, her personality. And it was right around the time when we had started ideating this feature about kind of being a fish out of water in this new beautiful space. And then her personality was inspiring and, and ended up kind of informing um, some qualities of one of our lead characters, Gloria. And so I think at that point it was Spain or bust. We got all our pieces here. We're so excited. And then Rita actually ended up being the lead actor in the film as well. You're yeah. just answering all the questions I was going to ask you. <laughs> yeah. We're very talkative. We just drank our coffee. <laughs> What's that? Is it about the instinct about knowing someone that, you know, doesn't come with like a history of acting, like with Rita and just being like, hey, be in this film? So yeah. Some well, people we, were like, are y'all crazy? And we're like, no. I know. We, I, we, we care a lot about casting. And I feel like it's something that um, we, you know, think a lot about and everything that we do. And so we weren't, we reached out and we're like, hey, do you act? And she was like, she didn't say no. She was like, I'm an actor in formation, which we weren't really sure what that meant. But we tried to get on a call. We tried to get her to send a self tape and it took her a long time to like actually do it. I think she was, she didn't, she wasn't feeling confident about it and had never really done it before. And so then we just got on a call with her and just like kind of met her and talked with her and like just built a relationship over Zoom for a really long time. And we were just kind of like talking through the script and the character and like she had a really immediate emotional uh, intelligence about humans and um, scenarios and just like understood dynamics very intuitively and so that to us was like a really good sign um and then yeah we just like she was just good we did some yeah reads we, with we her. did some re yeah we started doing reads with her to kind of like warm her up into it because she'd never really done that before but yeah i mean we were encouraged i think you know we we did explore more traditional casting avenues as well with her part but just didn't find anyone like her yeah and we were like we just can't and we she's got to do it we kind of figured going into it too that she i mean she's not a traditional actor she'd never been on camera like this before and so uh, but from like getting to know her and meeting her we sort of knew that she would have this um kind of organic spark like she definitely like throws things out randomly like she'll just like bring something random that you're not expecting into us that was like so valuable for this character to just like kind of keep you on your toes and to keep Sophie and the actor that played Sophie on her toes as well. Yeah, they were so complimentary to one another because Reina is, you know, more traditionally trained, whereas Rita hadn't really acted much before. And I think she'd that, been like theater class. And yeah, like, yeah. But it was like a different, you know, it was nice to kind of have somebody a little bit more structured and then somebody not. And I think those energies actually pair really well. Did Rita also play soccer? No. no, neither. She's an athlete. Like she does, um, 
track and she's like a speed walker she, she like won fun. yeah she's a gymnast so she's very athletic um and she won the catalonian speed walking championship yeah. <laughs> which she demonstrated to us on like day three of set and is so incredible i could cry um it but- was important for us to find somebody athletic i mean it, there's there's obviously something it, it's very difficult when casting a very specific skill as well um with this short soccer wasn't like extremely detailed in the way it was shot so it didn't matter as much, I think, with the feature. And but both her and Raina did some classes. They did they did they each had like a coach. Or Raina had a coach in New York and then they did some stuff together just to kind of like work through the scene. Um, but yeah, she wasn't she's not like she's played soccer, but she's not like a intense soccer player. Because yeah, I do see that athletic form in her. That's always like, did she also play soccer? <laughs> yeah. She they both played before, but yeah. not seriously. But yeah. they're they're both athletic, which was important to us because you yeah, you see characters get cast to do sports films that just don't have they don't sell it you don't believe that they're, they're really more like theater kid type than yeah, that. yeah but yeah now and getting this to, to happen besides you the filmmakers you do need to get a little help and assistance and you have uh, someone very popular as executive producer can you talk about having her you do yeah oh my god it's just the best it's like a dream every day yeah, I mean, we met Kelly through um, Luke Anderson, who kind of like, you know, we were in an early stage of trying to get this project made. And he's like, I actually know a partner that would be really interested. And he had gone to. And we're like, who is it? Like, and he's like, oh, you know, Kelly O'Hara. We're like, what? Like, I'm sorry, we're talking queer World Cup winning soccer star. Maybe you want to yeah. be part of this? Like, OK, Luke, brilliant. So. But they we... were best friends in at Stanford. They yeah. went to school together. And mm-hmm. so. The, it was just a long friendship. Yeah. And yeah. we met them via Zoom. We met Kelly and her fiance, Cameron, and pitched the story to them. And they were like immediately supportive and passionate yeah. and, and on board. And we've been saying too, it's like this not weird thing, but like Carrie and I and Kelly and Cameron are both queer woman couples kind of work on this film together. And I, I almost feel like sometimes we're all coming out with the film because it's like we're just, I think all four of us were a little bit like, you know, later in life, queer women and and it's been really cool to work on a story with people who understand some of what Carrie and I have been through but Kelly is amazing long story short she's yeah. like I mean come on is there anything better than being championed by a world cup champion like we're so lucky she's so authentic she's so charismatic about making this both the short and turning it into a feature and we're so honored to have her on the team. This is going to be a full feature. We'll be seeing. Uh, you know what, uh, Nancy? We are saying that. We all hope for it to be. And Kelly and Luke and Cameron and Cookie, like our whole team is is uh, working on that. Would you change the location? Because now I feel like that location has the heart. We have to be in Spain. Yeah. And I think maybe like the house and all that like could change, but the It'll be the Catalonia. Setting, yeah. yeah. Or somewhere near catalonia yeah that's where we were inspired and our and our um spanish producers the team at japonica um they'll be a part of it as well they've they've been amazing to us tell me about your guys' careers and you how your career has involved because um you've been working together for a while a long while um you started with commercials music videos other short series but now with films um how has that challenged you and working together good yeah. question well the funny thing is our our relationship actually started with a film early on that was at tribeca um and that was like sort of what solidified our relationship you know, i feel like our our relationship has always been very intertwined with work and our joy yeah. and love of creating things i think this particular project it's been years since we really embarked on a serious narrative pursuit outside of music video and commercial and this one was challenging. I mean, you, you chime in too, but for me, it was like, we're used to having a budget provided and a clear timeline and a large team. And for, you know, we're doing an indie grassroots lesbian short film in Spain. Like, you know, there's not a big pot of money sitting around for things like that. So we, we were trying to figure out how do we even make this thing? So I think fundraising was something new to us that, that we had to work really hard on. And then also like you know, just generally being on a lower budget was, was hard. Um, our team who, who chose to be a part of this with us, you know, Cookie, Japonica, everyone, all the crew went above and beyond to support us and wear many hats. And that was a challenge. I mean, we were 
I, I would say we were spread a little bit thin on set. I fell and broke my arm on the last day after shooting the arm breaking scene. Like we're all just exhausted. Um, but it was so fulfilling and so heartwarming because the people who showed up showed up to this project really wanted to be there as opposed to like a commercial thing where it's more of like, I don't know, it's just different. What would you say for our relationship? Well, um, I, I mean, I think that the years like working in music video and commercials really set us tone and a style and sort of informed what it was going to be. And we had really like solidified that with a lot of projects we've done. And so that part and like, you know, the directing capabilities and, you know, even writing, I mean, a lot of our music videos and commercials, like people come to us for like narrative based stuff. That's sort of what we're, our specialty is. And so, um, that all was like solidified and we have it down and it was, yeah, all the things you were saying were sort of the new elements that we were trying to figure out. And yeah. so um, I think also for our relationship to go back to the question, it was also kind of a little bit more personal for us too. Like that was something that struck me about going to Spain and having people all over the world rally around us because yeah, yeah there was an emotion that was like, I don't even know what it was like I I don't know the like I don't know the name of the emotion it was like somewhere around pride and like being supported and, and yeah I mean when we arrived in Spain the amount of love we were receiving from the crew people. I mean everybody was so invested in the story and like couldn't wait to like put it on screen so yeah. it was cool I was like you know sobbing on set right before we shot the kiss scene because it was just so emotional you know yeah, it, in rehearsals yeah, yeah we had a long coming out process ourselves many years long so we it was cool being able to finally make our first queer narrative project so a lot of feelings why don't you invite people to uh attend your premiere that's going to be taking place on the 8th yeah we well it's sold out immediately and we were <laughs> great news so what's oh, next? No, like, <laughs> i i wish i could well, I, yeah we do have a bunch more screenings though like we're screening at provincetown that you can get tickets there we're screening in san francisco at um frameline mm -hmm. we're screening at uh oak cliff in texas in dallas um, we're going to, there's, there's some, there's some things that will be coming out soon with more screenings in LA Angeles, and like all a, over the place. So there's, they're going to be, there's going to be more to see too. Yeah. It's summer of ripe. So yeah. follow us on our Instagram. It's yeah. You can find out about everything. Double. There. No, what is our Instagram? Right. Double underscore film. And we post all the screening updates there. So I wish I could invite more people to Tribeca, but yeah. <laughs> crazy. Those tickets, man. That's great news though. Congratulations on your yeah. big opening. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you so much for your time. And again, congratulations. Thank, Thank you. you. Appreciate it. Have You're a nice day. Thank you. You too. Bye-bye.